so excited. We're going to see the Class of 86 video show tonight. Yeah, I can't wait. We'll get to see the Twilight Zone, Test Busters, the news. And, and the dogs in it, too. Oh, it just thrills me. Meet Stuart Dent, a young man who wants to become a doctor. It's his first day of medical school, and he's eager to begin his study of the mysteries of the human body and mind, and the workings of life, birth, and death. He'll discover today that his school teaches these subjects in a somewhat unconventional manner, in the style of the Twilight Zone. I 
Stuart. Look a little tight. Nothing to worry about. I know it's a long time. I'm a little nervous. Oh, it's okay. Come, come, come. Okay. Be able to be any problem. Anyway, uh, well, where is this place? Oh, you don't like it. This is where they bring all the bodies, you know, to my place. <laughs> of Stuart Dent and his fellow medical students will sit on the shelves forever, soaking up formaldehyde instead of medical facts. They had the misfortune of attending a medical school with a slightly different curriculum, found only in the Twilight Zone. I'm Johnny Moron. There's an epidemic of a new kinds of AIDS. Details to follow on a Medical Inquirer news report. Are you sick and tired of exams that ask trivial questions? Are you ready to convert from the conventional curriculum to PCC? Do you want to eliminate institutional devices which encourage competition instead of cooperation? Are you constantly being bothered by professors threatening you with exams? Has your love life gone sour just a few days before an exam? Or do you suffer from the agony of post-traumatic test syndrome? Do you prefer books over people? Do you break out in a cold sweat at the mere thought of an exam? Do your friends and relatives think you might have a studying problem? After reading only one page of class notes, do you find it difficult to stop studying? If your answer to any of these questions is yes, call this toll-free number. Test Busters, 1-800-4-NO-TEST. That number again, 1-800-4-NO-TEST. Call now. Operators are standing by. Test, test Busters, we're ready to relieve you.
since the day before the exam. And there ain't no time to cram. Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! On the day of the test, your heart pounds in your chest. Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! When anxiety is high and your libido is low, who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! You're tired, man, sweating and shaking. Could it be the drugs you're taking? Should have been up steady and late. Instead, you were out on a date. Study becomes an obsession. You go into a deep depression. You're making multiple choices, and you start to hear voices saying it's time to call the Ghostbusters. When one best answer can give you cancer. On the day of the test, you need some rest. Identify the structure on the slide, but you can't, because your brain is fried. Piece of flesh with string around it, you don't know where the hell they found it. Think you're ready for the war. But first, you got to pass national board. After half an hour, you figured it out. Tough luck. Too bad. They threw the question out. Bladders are painfully distended. This test has got to be ended. For the Medical Inquiry Report, I'm Johnny Moron. And I'm Emily Acorn. Good, Good evening. evening. In the top of the news, the <coughs> Center for Disease Control in Atlanta has reported an outbreak of a number of unusual variants of AIDS, the crippling and often lethal immune disorder, which has devastated the homosexual population. This, much to the amusement of Jerry Falwell and his moral majority pals. Tell us about one of the variants, Emma. Well, Johnny, one of the variants has been audiovisual AIDS. Thirteen medical students at the University of New Mexico were hospitalized with AIDS-like symptoms after excessive use of audiovisual material at the University of New Mexico. The disease was traced to a 3D view master and a set of headphones that were purportedly used during the summer by Haitian refugees. According to a medical library spokesperson known as the Nazi, Haitian refugees using fake ID cards posed as medical students and somehow managed to elude the normally strict library security measures, said the spokesperson. They looked like medical students to me. They were always talking and sneaking around and trying to watch fam family feud on the televisions. 
Next story. Band-Aids uh, was described in all members of the rock group KISS and the Bay City Rollers when they were reported dead within 48 hours after performing on a Las Vegas, Las Vegas hotel stage, which had been used earlier by entertainer Wayne Newton. How bizarre. How bizarre. In other news, I saved someone's life and didn't even know it, exclaimed Laura Brown, a fourth year medical student at the University of New Mexico School of Medicine, a few days after the amazing life-saving event took place. It appears that Anna Flaxis, a 17-year-old high school student who was returning from a Rick Springfield concert, suddenly gasped a number of times, fell to the ground, and was quickly succumbing to death. A paramedic discovering Flaxis on the ground, hyperventilating, grabbed a lunch bag with the name Laura Brown on it, which happened to be lying next to the dying girl, immediately covering the girl's face with it and brought Flaxis from the clenches of death back to life. Rescue efforts were somewhat hampered by medicine bow personnel who kept yelling, ABC, clear the airway, with repeated attempts to remove the lunch bag from Flax's face. However, the stars were in Flax's favor that night as medicine bow received a Coke request over the walkie-talkie and quickly left the scene. Later, in an interview with a Medical Inquirer staff, Brown said that she had received the personalized lunch bags as a gift, but had been depressed that afternoon when a gust of wind blew a lunch bag away. She had used the same lunch bag 53 consecutive times prior to that day and was going for a record of 182. But said Brown, I had a feeling of peace at the same time my lunch bag was saving a girl's life. She also said, I remember telling myself that a lot of people in the world had it a lot worse than me. I also said, bang your face out loud, not knowing why or what it meant, just assuming it was a reflex reaction to a lecture that day. Now I realize that this was some sort of psychic communication. Things are much better and back to normal today thanks to Laura and her lunch bag. Flaxus returned Brown's lunch bag with added thanks and Brown is continuing to bring lunches in it to extend her record. Sensible people throw these away, Scott. After they've burned them. That's what I used to think. They really don't give away all that money. That's what I used to say. We were about to lose our trailer. Owen had not had a job for over a year. And now I'm not unemployed. I'm retired. <laughs> you can be a winner just like the Dole. There's no contest to enter, no lottery tickets to buy, no magazine subscriptions. All you got to do is visit a doctor and you're eligible for malpractice millions. At the Shyster and Shyster jury of your peer sweepstakes, we gave away six billion, that's billion dollars last year. So don't throw away this envelope. It may be your ticket to millions. And answer before June 1st, and our contingency fee dropped from one half to one third. So what are you waiting for? The sooner you enter, the sooner you're a winner. You may be our next $10 million winner. We, we never, never knew that pain and, pain and suffering could, could be like this. Dr. Omar, world-famous surgeon known for his ingenious manipulations of tendons in the extremities, is being sued for connecting prominent Albuquerque lawyer William Marchiando with the mob. The alle allegedly, Marchiando was in the hospital for minor surgical procedure when spotted by Omar. According to Marchiando, Omar ordered nurses to send Marchiando into surgery, thinking Marchiando was another victim of a botched job by a general practitioner in Montana. Meanwhile, well-known mob gangster Joseph the Wolverine Priolo was in surgery having metal fragments removed from his body. Priolo's car had blown up after his chauffeur had opened the door, causing many metal fragments to lodge in Priolo's extremities. Then, Marchiando stated, Omar proceeded to connect Marchiando's right biceps brachii tendon to Priolo's right flexor digitorum profundus. This not only forces both Marchiando and Prolo to face opposite directions, but causes Prolo to get trigger happy whenever Marchiando blows his nose, combs his hair, or eats in Italian restaurants. Emily? I believe that's Italian restaurants. Thank you. Whatever. Those UNM psychologists are at it again. The medical inquirer has discovered that no longer 
are psychologists just messing with rat brains. They have now placed radio-controlled electrodes in human brains of the fourth-year medical students, George Baca and Twana Sparks, so that the pleasure centers of the brains can be stimulated whenever an elevator button is pressed. These students can often be found standing by the elevators in the hospital, pushing elevator buttons in excess of 100 times per minute. The motive behind Colonel Gaddafi's reign of terror against the United States has been discovered. In a medical inquiry exclusive, sources close to Gaddafi, well-known 1978 medical school dropout, were quoted as saying this is the colonel's own little way of getting even for the pimp block. According to a spokesman, if only there had been PCC then, a lot of bloodshed could have been avoided. This is a college classroom. It's a place where an experimental program is being conducted for training people in a new way of learning medicine. These aren't veterinary students. They're medical students in their first year at the University of New Mexico Medical School. They're spending a Saturday preparing young heifers for artificial insemination. The rancher they're helping, Alan Thal, is also a country doctor. You have to talk to them, you see. If you talk to them, then generally it works. Ranches and small towns, rural clinics, and community hospitals are the background for this unusual experiment in medical education. This is where Dr. Thal and other rural New Mexico physicians supervise students just starting in medical school. Traditionally, med students don't work with patients until their third year of school. Here, they deal with patients immediately. The idea is to get the students out of the lecture hall and into the real world as soon as possible. You've got to, uh, you know, you've got to be patient. Okay, that's good enough. Do you hear anything? None. None. All right. The extended period these first-year students spend out in the countryside well, isn't the only unique aspect of the New Mexico program. Back on campus, those taking part in the program do not attend lectures and do not take tests. Instead, students learn in small, problem-based tutorials. The kidney responds to this, to a diminished blood flow by saying, gosh, we've got to get more blood in this body, get our volume up. Taken individually, each component of the New Mexico curriculum is not all that unique. Other medical schools are also experimenting with the same ideas. What is special about this is how they've combined it into a tough, problem-based, student-directed program of medical education. I think a real important part of the program is that uh, it's teaching us to be lifelong learners. Sometimes you feel pressure, but it's, it's not the extreme pressure of a deadline pressure. You're not under a uh, type of pressure that, that's going to be relieved by a test but there's the pressure of, of passing the boards in our second year, and I think that keeps us motivated in addition to, uh, you know, just wanting to find out what's the matter with a particular patient. Dealing with patients is, of course, the ultimate test, especially when it's an emergency. In this case, a man shot in the face during a barroom brawl. Very well. As a matter of fact, Bobby was shooing my horses last week, and I've got to keep Bobby in good shape. I'm dependent on him. He's dependent on me. So it works out pretty well. Control plans to follow up this study with another looking at newborns. And that's... Do you want me to read this one? No, I don't oh, like that okay. story. That's it from the Medical Center Inquirer News. I'm Emily Acorn. And I'm Johnny, Johnny Moron. Good, good night, night and good, and good riddance. <laughs> Don't ask what's on my scrubs. A music video that explodes the myths about surgery.
gonna show you guys how to get ready in a hurry. Pretty fast for an old geezer, huh? Before I go to the OR, I'm gonna have a cup of this lousy coffee and a filthy cigarette in the boys' room. I hope you enjoyed the people. Everything that happens in life can happen on a drug. Drugs can make them laugh. Drugs can make them cry. There's a pill for most every How dull for the folks off the walls, xylocaine for prevention of pain, lay six IV really make some pee. That's medication. If blood is beginning to clot, make it thin with some heparin, raise PT with some coumadin. That's medication. The body can be septic, just teeming with germs. Or gross parasites, lots of disgusting worms. There could be herpes type 2. Then you need bugs that kill drugs. Get them in the big jug. Relax with a dose of Cirax. <coughs> be keen with some codeine Percocet. Dilux, Darbon, Morphine, the world is a drug, and drugs are a world of medication. If blood pressure is too high in Dural, or some thiazide, if that fails, start the nitroprusside. That's medication, prevent pregnancy with a pill or thonovum or norinil use hormones like progesterone that's medical 
medication. The stool can be hard, constipated, or foul diarrhea, a bad case of the runs. You might need Lomatil or some MOM in the PM for a good BM in the AM. Where there's a pill, there's a way. Call your doc for a prescription today. Medicaid, the American way. The world is a drug, and drugs are a world of medication. Get some pens for you. Be sure and find my drugs. Okay, we'll see you here next week. With next week's barbecue. This week, At the Lectures takes a look at the entertainment offered by the UNM School of Medicine faculty. We'll be reviewing performances by Drs. Gailey, Waterman, and Weiss. Our first feature is titled Think, 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 directed by Leonard Napolitano, which stars Dr. Gailey. You may recall that Dr. Gailey started his career as Captain Kangaroo, but was replaced by Bob Keisham after Gailey killed Mr. Moose in an attempt to demonstrate the anatomy of the GI tract. Gailey then went on to star in a number of forgettable, low-budget instructional films. In Think, 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 Gailey is the professor and coach for a group of UNM medical students training for a competition with Russian students in an internationally televised game of medical trivial pursuit. We're expected to believe the ridiculous plot, which pits the underdog New Mexico students against the hardcore, scientifically trained Russians. Sound familiar? It's a rocky ripoff. In this scene, Gailey tries to inspire the slack-jawed Lobos. Think of all the things that you can. Now, some are more likely than others, but think of this big class and fit the information together so that by the time you finish reading this and having read the material in the textbook or listened to the lectures, you have some understanding of what you think is most likely. Okay? The second question on this case is uh, what do you think could be done to determine whether the, uh, whether the problem originates in the nervous innervation of the esophagus, or is it a muscle problem? Is it a scarring? Is it a tumor? What kind of tests might you think of, do, of doing? Now, I know that you don't know the clinical tests. But you know that grandma or uncle so-and-so had an upper GI series where they swallowed a very uh, mixture. You know a lot of medicine you don't haven't been applying. So we all live in a very sophisticated medical world. And so you have information that you can already start to apply to the problems. And what you learn in medical school shouldn't be separate from your own knowledge from outside. So start thinking about what you already know. I don't understand the lack of logic in this scene. Here's a man telling a bunch of top-notch students, students who are far smarter than he is, who got far better grades than he did, who got into medical school, something he failed to do, and he's telling them to start thinking, it's preposterous. I agree with Eugene. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the rest of this film either. If you've seen Rocky, you can probably guess the ending. I think that think, 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 stinks, stinks, stinks. Next. We have a delightful film from the man who brought us Flatulence Follies, Who'll Stop the Wind, Gone with the Wind, and Wind Walker. This one is entitled Elementary, My Dear Waterman, and stars the lovable Dr. Bob as a talented medical school professor who dreams of starring on Broadway. In this early scene in the film, Dr. Bob shows his wit, his charm, and his ability to make the shadow of a bunny with his hand. Here you see the diaphragm, under the diaphragm, the large liver on the right, the stomach on the left, usually with a gas bubble that you can use like a little level in x-rays to tell you whether the patient's lying down or lying on his stomach or standing up and so forth. And then from the stomach, uh, the GI tract, covered over 
in this view, by the greater momentum which hangs down <coughs> to the intestine. If we lifted that greater momentum up, what's right underneath? Stuck to the back of the greater momentum? The transverse colon. The transverse colon is behind here somewhere. I don't want to give away the ending of this film, but as you might guess, Dr. Bob does make it to Broadway, and he wows audiences with his ability to inflate balloons from either of two orifices. This is an important and a different film. It rises above ordinary scatological humor. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Thumbs up what, Gene? This is a fart film, operates on the same level as Waterman's previous film, has absolutely no redeeming value or message, and I can only recommend it for those who enjoy jokes about dead babies or Helen Keller. This film does have an important message. It appeals to me on a gut level, and I think Waterman's performance is Oscar material. I'm still giving it a thumbs down. Next up, we have a horror movie titled Aldo, I Warned You, which tells the story of a group of outer space aliens with the ability to transform themselves into a variety of organisms who try to take over the Earth by posing as doctors. It stars Weiss as a naive professor who initially thinks the aliens are typical medical students, but then wises up as he tries to fight the aliens. In this scene, Weiss catches a glimpse of the aliens in their true form, but laughs it off as a prank. Okay, now that we've finished some of these basic concepts, I mean, you should really understand this by now, I'm sure. Uh, while we finish this, what I would like to do is give you a problem and what I'll do is I'll continue to do what we've been doing. That is, I'll, I'll call on you by name and ask uh, somebody here to uh, work with that problem. And what I would like to do is to look at this pressure volume curve. And if you'll tell me where the, uh, the Asia Day order would be in these particular curves. OK, Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Later in the film, Weiss tries to warn the authorities about the aliens. Look, these students aren't normal. I've seen them. I mean, they're crazy. They're going to try to take over the world. We've got to stop them. Hold on now. How do you know this? Well, look, I've seen them in their true form. I even saw them downstairs eating cadavers in the anatomy department. As corny and unoriginal as this film is, I still like it. Weiss is quite good as the bumbling, disorganized professor who transforms himself into a one-man army to fight the aliens. I can't agree with you on this one, Roger. This is a no-budget film. The aliens are amateur actors with paper bags over their heads. And Aldo Chella, character look a little two-dimensional to you, that's because he's a paper cutout. The sound is so bad, I can't understand a thing Weiss is saying. This isn't a horror film. This is a comedy. The script is terrible, and I'm giving it a thumbs down. I'm still giving it a thumbs up. Join us next week as we take a look at three more performances on At The Lectures. Make you wanna die. You're gonna cry when he turns it 
that you'll never catch. So please be MC Peter, you can be be mine. Are you fed up with expensive, personalized medical care? Tired of waiting in doctor's offices after hassling over the phone for an appointment? Come to FERS Urgent Care Centers. Bring your family for the best in cheap assembly line medical care. No waiting, no appointments. Just walk in and get in line. The service is fast and friendly, and you can't beat our prices. Center. Nice little baby you have there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We have a special today on shots. Oh, yeah? That's, That's what right. she needs. Oh, is that what you brought her in for? Uh-huh. And Good. I watch MASH reruns all the time on TV, so I got medical experience. Do you want to get do, the shots? You want to do them yourself? Yeah. All right, let me tell you what the deal is. $9.95, we put them in. 99 cents if you put them in. I'll do it. Okay, just help yourself through the line here. Anything else we can help you with? Well, I'm going to look around. Okay. This knee is kind of been giving me trouble. Do you guys have any knees? Knees? We have plenty of knees. We have an orthopedic specialist back there. He'll fix up your knee. No problem. There is. That's how, right. How much, good. how much is the replacement knee? I'm not real sure. There? You'll have to ask him, but I believe it's $49.99 with tax included. With tax included. Now, I thought it said in the newspaper that that included installation. Is that right? That's right. That's right. He, oh. he gets it done in just a few minutes. He just has to get in line for the uh, the knee surgery. Uh, it's a day surgery, and they have you out in 15 minutes. 15 minutes? That's right. Well, that's a great deal. I, I'm just going to take a look around, but I think I'll probably do that knee okay. thing. Good. Well, help yourself around. Thanks a lot. So treat yourself and treat your family with a visit to a nearby Furgent Care Center today. Medical care for less. Oh, that's why 
so young, you know you failed to mention the most important finding in this case. This patient has insurance. Insurance? I don't understand. Well, let me explain then. In this life, one thing counts in the bank, large amounts. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to do a calf or two. You've got to do a scope or two. You've got to do a calf or two. Why should we ignore facts? People like paying quacks. Opportunity knocks at every crock. You've got to do a scope or two. You've got to do an appy or two. You've, You've got, got to, to do, do a scope or two. or two. Opportunity knocks with every crock. You've got to do a scope or two. Robin Hood, what a crook. Gave away what he took. Charity fine, subscribe to mine. You've got to do an epi or two. You've got to do a section or two. You've got to do a section or two. Oh, it was far too good. You've got to do a section or two. I think I understand. When I see someone healthy, there's a way of getting wealthy. Every cough makes me well off. You've got to do procedures or two. You've got to do procedures or two. You've got to do procedures or two. Every cough makes us well off. You've got to do procedures or two. and I call all the sick patients, that all really gets depressing. Well, there's an easy way to correct that. Whenever work gets me down, all I have to do is think of my favorite things. Women in labor without complications. Waiting rooms jam-packed with full-paying patients. Call a cystectomy close with her strings. These are a few of our favorite things. X-rays and CAT scans and nuclear bone scans. Ordering nurses to fix up the bedpans. Pain medication to stop suffering. These are a few of our favorite things. Zitzwarts and pimples and something or other. <laughs> Constance and 
Jessen in a powdery snowfall. Golf every Wednesday, perfecting our swing. These are a few of our favorite things. When I'm off tight, on the all night, when I'm going mad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. Yes, but as a known scientist, it was a bit surprising if the girl blinded me with something. 